and I see Theo, and I know that he needs me, regardless of what a little shit is being. <laughs> <laughs> So hello guys, thank you, thanks for having me. Uh, Ismael, I met you at Comic Con. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we talked, and I'm so glad to be here because I love Lord of the Rings and I love Rings of Power, and I watched the first three episodes, and I already fell in love again with the show. Oh, good. And my first question is for you, Ismael. Uh, the first season, uh, Adam did suffers a great loss, mm -hmm. and now he's dealing with that, and he's dealing with Theo, who doesn't like him at all. Mm -hmm. And I think that your character in the season, in season two is a little bit more taciturn. And I wanted to you to tell me, how did you explore these feelings for season two? I mean, as you say, with loss, um, p people deal with loss and grief in a, a multiplicity of ways. And um, I have myself dealt with deep personal loss. So I was I connected with that easily. And what it did to me is like it, it almost, uh, I became selectively a mute for, for months. Uh, and and uh, I remember saying that I didn't want to speak because I didn't want what was left of her in me to leave my body, essentially. So I, let, I had that motivation as well. But um, in terms of elvenness, I, we deal with, uh, there's a stoicism. There's a way that through time, we allow these emotions to, to go through. So that was another consideration. And um, at the same time, it's what like zip it and put it together because you have to be a father mm -hmm. and you have to be a leader. So cry later kind of thing. And I see Theo and I know that he needs me regardless of what a little shit is being, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it really tests, tests my patience <clears throat> on and off screen. So <laughs> it's, uh, that really is all I needed, all I needed. Yeah, that's what I got watching the episode. Yeah. I, think, I think he's being a little piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, he's deal this boy has dealt with so much so quick, yeah. you know? So, I, and I see a lot of myself in him. In the, in the scope of my life and his life, we're kind of both teenagers in a certain way, kind of dealing with what we have and like all these massive changes. And so I understand his angst in a certain way, but he's, I, I feel, I've always felt, Arondir has always felt that he has leader in him. So, uh, the third episode, I think the third episode is my favorite so far. <laughs> third episode, we have Farazan kind of <coughs> throwing a little coup d'etat, <laughs> so to say, so to speak. And I wanted to know, uh, do you think uh, that karma is coming his way, maybe? the rest of the season because I didn't watch the rest of the episodes. You say karma. Is the karma, karma, yeah. Um, I don't believe it because like that's to suggest that like he's done something wrong, isn't it? And I don't think, see, yeah. now this is, this is where... Okay, no, don't okay. get okay. started. Okay. Uh, here we go. <laughs> you and I are about to have a chat, my friend. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take a break. <laughs> it's like, yeah. so he is, he is in, um, in, a, in a position where he can help his people. Now, you think of, like, humans, like, like say, for instance, you know, the, the giant tortoise in the Galapagos lives to about 400, 500 years old. Same with a, a Greenland shark. You don't begrudge them anything. But all of a sudden, you take another humanoid species. They're immortal. They're, you know, you've been put on this island. You can't go west. Their relationship with nature is so much different from yours. It's so much more profound. Your life is full of strife and hardship. You have to overcome nature. Your relationship with, with the birds, the bees, the animals, everything is so much more different. They can, they can, you know, they can wait for trees to grow and mature and maybe have a, just have a different sort of connection to them. That's not the case for us. So our, our relationship with the earth that we're on is so much more, it's like a horse with having the blinkers on, mm -hmm. you know, and that can be, I think that can be quite galling. Now, we're in a position right now where we can go one of two ways. We can either adhere to the old ways of the elves, the faithful, 
and, and keep on living like second-class citizens, or we can sort of take grasp of our own destiny and, and believe in our own ideology of what we who could be and fulfill our potential. Because right now, I think we're lagging. You have the dwarves, which have this very intense and passionate relationship you win from the earth. You have the elves, like I just said. And you also have the hobbits as well, which are probably more connected with everything. They just adapt and roll with it because they're so small to their environment. But I feel like men, or the world of men, they're the only ones, really, that let the environment get on top of them and don't really know why they're mm. there. It's, it's, yeah, it's quite a sad state of affairs, I think. So if you want those questions asked, who do you want in power to ask those questions and, and to guide you maybe to you know, your promised land of, of truth, I guess? Okay, that's, that's, why that's a brilliant. great that's answer. A great answer. I'm answer. changing my mind right now. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben, uh, Gilgalad has a lot more uh, protagonism this season. And I wanted to know, um, where do you see the character going? Because we all know the story sure. from Lord of the Rings, from Tolkien, from the movies, from the books. And I wanted to know, can you, uh, did you have a little bit of freedom to create maybe a little bit of a, the storyline for your character this season? Well, we all have, uh, it, it's a true collaboration for all of us. Um, and I do have the luxury of being able to constantly go back to the literature. In some ways, that's the best part of the job, is I get paid to reread the books. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've really enjoyed the trajectory of it, <coughs> in that we have so far to go and so much second age terrain to cover. What are these uh, adjustments we can make that are still a surprise for the elves? Like you were saying, you know, the, the trap of the elves is assuming that they are infallible. Mm. And what's lovely about what J.D. and Patrick have created is that in spite of their experience, longevity, um, uh, purpose in Middle Earth, they've allowed the evil to blossom right in front of their noses. And I think that's beautiful and in some ways oddly human mm. that we've taken our eye off the ball and, and pieces crumbling. So it really is about, like you said earlier, about embracing the density of the text. And if you do that, then the job is kind of done for you. So I, I enjoy those small steps. Um, and I, do, I am incredibly fortunate in that I know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. But like you were saying about Farazan, part of the, well, this isn't what you were saying at all, but it's what we were thinking. <laughs> but that, that part of the job is to know and then forget you know, Macbeth doesn't know how it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, that's a boring production of Macbeth. Farazan thinks he's a really nice guy. <laughs> um, sweetheart. Yeah. Sweetheart with that, like, you know, beautiful... Yeah, wet yeah, wet yeah, wet yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who's going to ask those questions yeah. indeed? Um, but that that's the beauty of what J.D. and Patrick are creating and why we're so fortunate that they've picked us to, to carry these characters. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Congratulations again on season two. I can't wait to see the rest of the episodes. I hope they send me. You'll be happy. Everyone. You'll be, yeah. you'll be really, we're really proud of it. And thank happy. you so much.